creatives and welcome to another video so today i'm here to share prompt 11 until 15 for december rember and december rember is a december daily project by barbara from 49 dragonflies and louisa heinzel their channels are linked down below in the description box if you want to see my uh, previous december rember videos you can check that out on my channel and now without any further ado, I will jump into the first prompt. So this is prompt number 11 and this says uh, hand or machine sewing and postcard. So I went through the thrift store uh, before we went into another lockdown and uh, I found this uh, postcard of Amsterdam and it is blank on the backside. I don't know, there was something about this image that really, really spoke to me. So I took it home and then uh, I saw this on the prompt list and I thought, well, this postcard is just perfect because I can use it as a journaling spot. So I'm taking some of the fabric pieces that I also already used before. You can watch that in the previous video. Uh, I am very much enjoying uh, repeating certain elements or certain supplies in this project to create a little bit of a cohesion. I am making this altered book and it is turning into a winter slash December journal slash kind of Christmas. But it's not really Christmas because I don't like Christmas. So that is also why I liked this um, December daily project even though I do not do it daily <laughs> I do this whenever I feel like doing it um, as we speak I only have two prompts left to create so uh, that is very very exciting and then I actually would have have completed a month-long challenge I'm so excited about that but back to what I'm actually doing. So I'm creating this cluster with fabrics that I used before and scraps from this previous project I also took a stamp, postage stamp, and this is a December stamp from the Netherlands. And I thought it was just perfect. Uh, I'm going to add some Tim Holtz words and it's going to say not all who wander are lost because uh, Amsterdam is a city that I lived and I was lost there. But now I wander there. So it's really, really funny. Uh, I went to my sewing machine and did a zigzag stitch. And then this is my... Um, take on the prompt for uh, the eleventh prompt um, I'm adding my date on with uh, um, when I made it it's something that I like to do I'm also adding the dates on the prompt list and then I'm going to add this journaling spot to the back of my journal I'm going to put that in that envelope so now I have a journaling spot inside that envelope Next prompt is bird and pocket and since I'm working in an altered book with a lot of pockets I thought I'm going to pick a pocket that is already in this book because I need either to decorate what is already in this book or I need some more uh, ephemera that I can use for journaling. I don't need any more pockets so I decided to create a companion for the first pocket that I made that was with prompt number two which was paint sample and stars so I thought it would be fun if I would you know create a couple of them or a companion. So I went to my scrap bin and I searched for blue colored scraps to create uh, on that strip and this is actually one of the few pieces that will be stuck down in my journal uh, immediately the paint sample is also already stuck down in my journal but most of the things that you see are still uh, loose because I haven't completed the pages yet but I'm taking all different kinds of scraps uh, like scrapbooking paper and I got this in happy mail so it's very very interesting paper I actually very much love it and I'm going to create a collage on the background. So I thought this was a little bit dull. So I'm going to add some more pieces because I don't know. I did cover it up, but it, it didn't spoke enough to me. It wasn't interesting enough. So I found this piece of ledger paper that I coffee dyed. And uh, I'm, of course, uh, inking up all the edges with some vintage photo distress oxide. Uh, but it was really fun to create a companion for the owl that was already on the other side. And it was really fun to use these blue colors. So as you can see in my journal, you see the red and greens like Christmas colors. But you see also a lot of blues as in a winter themed or icy snowy journal. Which I'm very, very much enjoying. And I am using some word stickers uh, like on the previous one as prompts 
I'm going to use them as prompts to journal later on some thoughts and some things about the month and this period of time that I am, am in right now uh, because December is always a tough month for me but now I also have a burnout so I think there are a few things that I have to say and document this uh, this December and uh, keep them close and learn from them so uh, that is my plan for this uh, journal because I am a very uh, big believer of journaling. I do a lot of personal journaling uh, to clear my brain and to help me think again. And uh, I I do think journaling is a very, very good way to deal with your mental health. But back to what I'm doing. So I also added some uh, washi strips um, to make him sit onto something and I also added a piece of a book page and now I'm going in with the free printables from Barbara that I also used on the right side of the page to you know connect these two a little bit but I didn't want to place the stars on the exact same spot so I am figuring out how these two pages can work together with each other and be similar but not identical that they still have their own character to it and i think uh, it worked out pretty well so i'm very excited about that and i just love these two owls uh, they are really really fun and they <laughs> look so cool um yeah so i'm very happy and i absolutely love these stars that are from barbara that i was able to use them in my journal I'm very very much appreciative about all the freebies that she's sharing this uh, uh defem remember it's very very cool to work with them so this is uh, the pocket and now i'm going to add another extra little strip because it felt a little bit empty down there so i thought uh, maybe an extra little strip will help with that and it absolutely did i'm going to add my date onto the pocket i also added my date on the pocket on the right side and I'm also going to add uh, some words, some Tim Holtz words, because I also added them on the right side. On the right side, I made my own poem, uh, but on this one, I just take a sentence that's already in there. And it says the impossible is often the untried. And that is my uh, entry for number 12. Number 13 is magazine or newspaper and belly band. And this one came together so nicely and I think this is definitely one of my favorites that I created. I had so much fun creating this one. So I took a Flow magazine and I started flipping through it and then I saw this image and I was sold. And then I thought, do I need to look further? I'm like, no, <laughs> why? <laughs> Why look further if you found the image that you want to use? Because I thought it would be so cool if you would make a strip, a belly band of that frost. Isn't that a cool background for a collage? I absolutely loved it. So I'm marking it off and cutting it down to make it into a belly band. And now I'm going to create. So these things are all things that are laying on my desk because I was creating several at once. And uh, I found a playing card, half a doily, and now I'm taking another bird from that beautiful uh, animal encyclopedia. And this bird has such a beautiful blue color. I love him. He is gorgeous and he fits perfect on my page. Look at him. So I also took another scrap from a tag that we made uh, with prompt number eight, that was believe, with the snow woman. Uh, and I thought these colors were just beautiful. So I don't throw <laughs> away any scraps because colors are so um, speaking. And especially if you can, I can repeat in this book certain elements without making it look like they are repeating. Um, it's great. It creates a lot of cohesion. So I'm very much enjoying it. And I'm adding that little strip over there. It's funny to see that usually my background pieces, if I create clusters like this, have three pieces. So we have the playing card, have a doily, and then that tiny scrap strip over there. And then it has my focal point, the bird. So I'm uh, trying again the top, the gluing method top down. And it worked really, really well this time. So I'm very happy that it did. And now I'm going to glue down my cluster. So I'm lining it up with my belly band so I know where to put my glue exactly. So I will not over glue anything or put glue in places I, that I don't want it. And uh, then I'm just going to adhere everything to that strip. So it was still a bit empty. So I thought, well, let's go for some words. And I'm creating my own little 
journaling prompt thingy uh, and it says believe dreams and I'm going to um, outline everything with some tea dye dissolved oxide and then I'm uh, spelling uh, um, on the bottom create your journey because uh, you, I think you need to believe in your dreams um, I did and because I did I now have a degree which people thought I would never get so uh, yeah definitely believe in your dreams and create your own journey and if you can't color within the lines of society like I can't then that's okay create your own journey you don't have to do what everyone else is doing right so for me that means that I I need to live a different life than most people do uh, but that doesn't make me any less it's just me being different and I'm creating my own journey so I think I'm going to journal about something like that now I'm also going to add some sequins because I thought this bird needed some bling it needed some shine uh, because look at him being so majestic I love him he's so cool so I'm adding uh, these sequins in groups of three and then that is my entry for number 13 now we go to number 14 which is tape and index card or rolodex card so I have this index card and I am taking some masking tape and I'm going to create some texture because I'm going to do some mixed media. Uh, as you know, I love to do mixed media. I do a lot of mixed media, um, but I haven't done any mixed media for this journal yet. So I thought this prompt is perfect to do some mixed media. I have used this technique with the tape before in my art journals and I always very, very much love it. So I thought, well, let's do so a little little small mixed media for this journal and create a journaling card so I can journal on the back of this card. So I added some masking tape and now I'm adding some gesso to prepare my surface for my media. I'm going to do something very very fun. So I have these three new uh, distress paints and I am going to drip them on my page and then spray a lot of water to make them run. The uh, distress paints are made to react with water. So it's really really cool if they do and they leave very nice color variation. Uh, this is also a tick technique i did a very very long time ago but i totally forgot about it and then i saw a video from barbara where she used her fluid acrylics and i was like oh, i can do this with my distress oxides or with my distress paints i need to do this so i'm doing the femme rember and i saw that video for barbara so i thought it was perfect right to create something like that so what i'm doing is i'm dripping these colors on my um dripping drops of paint and then spraying them with a lot of water to make them run uh, i'm also using my finger to spread it out a little bit because you sometimes do need to help the paint a little bit to start moving but i think it's a give such a cool texture and such a cool look i'm also going to add a little bit more of the speckled egg uh, because i thought the salvage patina took over too much of the speckled egg so i am adding that one again and i very very much love how you can see the texture and all the changes in the color and the distressed look now i'm going in with some rustic wilderness it's also a new color and then this whoa look at this i loved it and then how it moved and this dark beautiful green color and oh this makes me so happy. I was so excited when I was creating this. Uh, so I was so happy that it all worked out what I wanted to do. And um, look at this gorgeous, gorgeous card and this gorgeous green color. It makes me, oh, beautiful. So beautiful. And you can see the texture. But I did want to add a little bit more to the texture. So I took my Distress Oxide in Vintage Photo. I'm going to ink up the edges. And I'm also going to add some ink on top of the tape strips. So I'm very carefully swiping my uh, ink blending tool over the tape. So you, the tape catches a little bit of the Distress Oxide. Now, pen paint wasn't completely dry. So... Um, beware of that when you do this <laughs> uh, but i really really loved it then i went to my into my stamps because i needed a little bit more in the background and i have this um, beautiful script stamp which i use with the gray ink and now i'm going in with a new stamp from caraval studio uh, with these dots uh, and a brown ink to create some more texture and i absolutely absolutely love it i love dots i love texture stamps these make me so so happy and now I'm taking um, my pewter acrylic, Amsterdam acrylic, 
and uh, I am putting it carefully over the tape where it is raised. Uh, I recently made a journal with a lot of texture and I tried it out to bring out the texture with some acrylic paint. I know Joanna Clough does it with the gilding wax and Barbara used gilding wax but I don't have gilding wax and I didn't want to buy it to be honest. So I thought I'm going to try this with uh, my acrylic paint that I have here because if I don't like it, what well, then I have bought gilding wax that I maybe will not <laughs> use. But I actually really, really liked it. And um, the also good thing is you can just dry it with your heat gun and it is permanent. Uh, so yeah, I've, I very much love to do this with uh, this acrylic paint and uh, maybe I will get some more metallic colors to do this but it's a lot of fun and I also very much love the journal that I created I don't know when I will share that but you will definitely see it um, I'm also taking some gesso to create uh, some snow it is a winter journal so uh, creating some snow and some white splatters I always love to create splatters splatters are so fun I can never stop once I start making splatters I keep on creating more splatters <laughs> So uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And then I went back into that animal book and I found these two friends. I think they're friends or buddies or maybe they're a couple. I don't know. Uh, I think they're friends. And um, I cut them out and I thought they would be perfect on this card because of their feathers. They have this beautiful color and perfect size. And it was just perfect. So um, I'm messing around a little bit with the texture. Because there will be texture underneath the bird. So I was messing around a little bit uh, if it would go. But uh, it turned out fine. It turned out great. I'm very happy with how these birds look on this card. Um, but now they are floating. So I go back to my scrap bin. And I am taking some more scraps to create a horizon. To create the earth for them to stand on. Uh, because they were just floating on my card. And the fun thing is with having all of these different kinds of scraps is. First of all I don't feel intimidated to use paper. If I need to tear into a new piece of paper. I always feel a bit, bit precious about it. Like I can ruin a beautiful piece of paper that I might want to use for something else but if it is scraps I don't really care but I also look differently to scraps than I do to full size papers so I find it always very fun to create with scraps and just tear them down into pieces and uh, create something new because I wouldn't have created this of full pieces I think so I have some transparency some packaging paper and then uh, this is from your creative studio paper and I layered them up to create this earth. So for me it feels like there is this earth. And then you have the sky. And you have some water on the ground. And I'm going to stick everything down. With some Nouveau Deluxe glue. And I'm going to find the perfect spot for my birds. But first I'm going to cut off the excess paper. And I'm going to ink up the edges. I also inked up the edges of the paper strips. Now it's time to glue down these two birds and um, like I said I'm going to use a lot of these things as uh, journaling prompts. So I'm going to figure out what I want to do with this card uh, because there's still something missing. So I'm doing a doodly border, of course. <laughs> I love doing doodly borders. Uh, this is also a very great substitute if you don't have a sewing machine or you don't want to do any hand stitching. Do a doodly border, it's amazing. <laughs> um, and so I do a doodly border. I have a Stettler Pigment Liner uh, 0.1. Be careful that your paint is dry, otherwise you will ruin your pen. Um, which I have done many, many times. And uh, then I decided, yes, I'm going to add this word sticker that says friendship. But perfectionism hit me. Um, I was so happy with this card that I needed to find the perfect spot for this word sticker. And I was doubting myself so much that I even tried this white one. Well, I didn't want to use a white one, but I thought maybe that looks better. And then I was trying to find the perfect spot. And, you know, when you're doubting yourself, you are never going to find that perfect sp spot because you're not confident in your decisions. So I thought, okay, I have fiddled around enough now. This is the moment I'm going to make a decision. And this was the spot that I chose and it is a perfect spot. So I don't know why I was... <laughs> 
<laughs> being so <laughs> so hard about it. Uh, I ended it off with some uh, black plus signs to bring in some more of the black from the word sticker. And now I'm finding a spot for it in my altered book. I'm going to put it in that triangular pocket on the top. So uh, I think that's very nice. And it also looks very nice with the belly band. Now the last prompt of today is the sparkle and book page. And oh my, this is a struggle. <laughs> this prompt is a struggle. So we go off a great start. I uh, wanted to create a booklet for the prompt list. And I thought I'm going to create a booklet with two book pages. And then I will add some sparkle with my wink of Stella. So after I, of course, decorated it. So we're going off a great start. I am gluing my prompt list down onto a book page. And I'm folding that piece over. I'm going to glue that down to make it a little bit more sturdy. But also so you don't have any weird paper gaps showing. Then I'm going to take the other book page and I will line everything up so um, that everything is covered with text. Because of course that is why I chose the book page, because I wanted to have the text. And um, burnishing it down very very well uh, on both sides. And then I have my booklet. So I'm going to tear off that excess piece because I also love the rough edges. Um, I didn't keep it because it didn't have any text on it. If I would have had text, I would probably fold it over. But it was just some white piece, so I didn't want to keep it on the back side. So now I'm starting to uh, tear off the excess uh, papers because I wanted to make it a little bit smaller. Uh, I didn't need as much space on the inside as I was having right now and also I would love to have these rough edges uh, around my booklet. Now it was a little bit difficult to tear the book page so with such a small uh, strip so um, usually I do this with my ruler but in the end I decided it was going so <sighs> it was such a struggle to tear this that in the end I decided to just um, tear it freehand and um, Make sure to not tear it too close to the edge. But even this was a struggle. Because I couldn't keep on tearing it. It would just uh, break. And then oh, it was such a struggle. But <laughs> in the end I have my rough edges. And uh, it was very very promising. Um, I'm going to ink up all the edges with some vintage photo. On the inside and on the outside. And then I thought well the inside looks a little bit too clean. And to new. So I'm going to add some random spots of extra uh, distress oxide. And I'm also going to put that on the fold. Now it looks a little bit more old and vintage. So now it was time to work on the cover of my tiny little booklet. And I grabbed some pieces that were floating around on my desk. Uh, like this man that I cut out of a book. Um, and that piece of ledger paper that I coffee dyed. And this piece you have seen before in the video. And I was just trying to create a collage background. And I was looking at it and I was like, I don't know. He was also not my guy. It was not, it was just not, no, I, I don't know. It was not, not the feeling I wanted to go for, it wasn't the vibe. And then I thought, well, I have this wonderful, wonderful book uh, with uh, people in black and white. I am going to pick one of them. So this is mistake number one. I chose a woman um, and she's amazing. Don't get me wrong, but she's a little bit small for my card. But I saw something in my mind that I wanted to create and I wanted to add to this card. So I thought, but she's pointing at something and I can make it work. But in the end, I I don't like it that she's so small. So that's that's throwing me off a little bit. But okay. Um, then I thought, okay, I have her. I have kind of this idea what I want to do and what I want to achieve. So now it is time to create my background. And I am going to use some things that I like to use. Uh, for example, this music paper. So I took one of my books and I took a sheet out of it. And I'm going to tear a strip 
of music paper and then I have a piece with a uh, off stamping of dates I don't know I really really like the look so I tend to clean my uh, date stamp or roller date stamp on paper strips I don't know I think it looks so interesting like you know the library cards and stuff from you know um, but um, I'm adding some more strips I also thought I do need a little bit of color on this because she's also black and white so I do need a little bit of color and I have that piece over there that we also already used earlier in the video on the belly band. And then I have two scraps, blue scraps from your creative studio paper. And this started off being very, very promising. So I liked where this was going. And I also have a blue, um, just regular paper scrap. Um... To bring in more of that wintry theme that I was going for and that wintry feel. So yeah, this looked this looked very promising. Um, uh, I was very, very happy where this was going. And um, then I decided um, on inking up all the edges of all the papers. And uh, I should have done that before, but I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to do it. So I took everything apart and inked it up. And now I'm going to put everything uh, back together again uh, the way I had it. Uh, I'm lucky to have kind of a photographic memory. So for me, these things are easier uh, than most, I guess, to, <laughs> to take it apart completely and then to put it back again uh, but I very very much liked it like I said it was promising uh, I like this background but she's a little bit small as you can see now very very clearly but I don't know I wasn't thinking I guess I was just looking at her posture and her appearance and I wasn't looking at her size <laughs> so now I'm going to start to glue everything down I'm using the top down gluing method trying to keep everything on its place and to stick all of these pieces down and uh, I very much enjoy this gluing uh, way of gluing it doesn't work off every time for me but um, it does work often which is very very nice um, I also don't glue my stuff always completely to the edge because I like it that I can stick st stick stuff underneath it so now I'm peeling up the big piece adding more glue and then uh, my background is ready for some other things that I wanted to do because I also still need to add the sparkle so we have the book page down but uh, I also need to add the sparkle and I have to be honest there was a point that I almost forgot about the sparkle <laughs> because I was so frustrated with my collage so I, I took her and I found a spot and I'm going to add a little bit of washi tape to create more contrast. Uh, I'm going to add it on several places. And then I am going to take this lace scrap. So if you have seen a previous video of the Femme Rember, you know where this is from. So this was still floating on my desk and I thought she needs a little bit of a backing because she's falling a little bit away in, in everything. And then I tend to always add two strips of washi while if I'm cre creating these washi collages I don't know they feel much more appealing to my eye sometimes I even add three pieces uh, but I'm adding two and now I'm gluing down that piece of lace and that was just floating around on my desk and I'm adding some vintage photo to washi tape because it was just too white it, it needed a little bit of vintage photo I'm adding her back and then I'm grabbing this label because I wanted to prompt the prompt list <laughs> to <laughs> sort of speak. So I wanted to write a little message to myself in that label. I wanted to write in that message that sometimes you need a little help and that is okay. Because this Defamer Rember and this prompt, li prompt list is helping me so much. It is helping me finding my own creativity back again. It is helping me to find joy again in creating. It is helping me through this burnout. It is helping me through December. It is doing a lot of things. And having a little bit of help is okay. Because sometimes you do need little little help. And um, especially I put a lot of pressure on myself to create wonderful, amazing things for all of you. 
that I totally lost sight of the fact that I'm just enjoying myself and that I don't always have to innovate myself. That I'm just here sharing my passion for creating and I'm sharing things that I love so I shouldn't be worried about creating the perfect project. So it is very nice to have a prompt list like this that helps me to create again and to have a lot of fun because I'm having so much fun in my craft room. It is, it has been so long since I had so much fun. So I'm so eternally grateful for Barbara and Louisa to do this challenge because it has been a long time since I had so much fun. So that is what I wanted to say with this prompt and this lady pointing at that label and with this message. Um, it just didn't turn out as good as I hoped. In the meanwhile, I added some other things. So I added some red stamping with a Tim Holt stamp because I also had a red label. And I'm adding three postage stamps. So these stamps are also December stamps from the Netherlands. And I am adding them in a triangular way. Uh, I like their red, reddish color. And I also thought it was fun that they created a little bit more extra texture to it. And, and then I thought, okay, I'm going to try sequins. Because it, this thing was still off for me. Um, so I'm taking out the sequins. And I'm putting it on the spot. And I really, really didn't like it. Uh, I thought maybe this can be my sparkle. Because I thought, well, maybe the Wink of Stella doesn't work anymore. I didn't like it. So I took it off. <laughs> and I took a Sabilo All Pencil to outline my woman and my label. Because I thought they were disappearing in the background. And they needed to stand out a little bit more. So this is the first time that I tried the Sabilo All Pencil on fabric. It works. But of course it gives a very different feel than it does on paper. So I do like it, uh, but it was it was kind of a struggle to do. Uh, and then I thought, yeah, but now I need an outline. <laughs> I need a doodly border <laughs> around my um, around my booklets, and then fade it out. So that is what I'm doing. Uh, I have this water brush, and I'm just fading that Stabilo All pencil out. So this is the first uh, one of the first times that I'm using a pencil. I very, very much like it. I totally get why people are so praising about this pencil. It works on everything. I have also used it on acrylic, on all kinds of porous, uh, non-porous surfaces. It is amazing. So yes, I love the Stabilo All Pencil. I also bought a white one, but I haven't tried that one yet. So I was totally off with this and it was just too much. So I decided to go back into my scrap bin and then I found this magazine scrap of a black and white photo. And it was just this nice gray scaled colors. I thought, okay, I'm going to add these and I'm going to add my sparkle to these circles. Like they are stars or snowflakes or snowballs or <laughs> I don't know. But I needed something to co calm the whole thing down and to create more in the foreground. So that is what I did. <laughs> I added circles. <laughs> I don't know. In the end, maybe it's not that bad, but it didn't turn out how I thought it would turn out. Uh, and I think with projects like these, you always have one that is absolutely horrible <laughs> or you absolutely do not like it's not that it is horrible i don't know it's that you expected something else or things just go wrong or your plan doesn't go as planned and uh sometimes it's more about the feeling i guess a project has than about the actual end result and then I also, it didn't come out, the glitter out of my Wink of Stella. And then I squeezed it and it came out too much. <laughs> Luckily, it was on the circle. So that's why you see me go back every time to that first one. To scoop up a little bit of that sparkle. Because there was a big, big, big blob of it on that first one. So I'm adding that sparkle to these uh, circles with the Wink of Stella. I do like the Wink of Stella because it's also a little bit of subtle sparkle. And uh, yeah, it was fun to use it again because it was a little while. I totally forgot about, about it that I have this. Uh, so it was fun to grab that again from my stash. So here you can see the subtle sparkle in the, uh, in the circles. And then that is the 
last prompt for today. Uh, so this will uh, go into my altered book. And I want to keep this prompt list, of course. And I will put it in the front of my altered book. Uh, so I know where it is. So here are some still shots of uh, <laughs> the prompts. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you're also enjoying December Rember. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and uh, I hope to see you all next time. Bye! Mm -hmm.